The reason for talking about unstructured data recommendation systems is it's been a growing demand for those skills in job market. By 2025, International Data Corporation project 175 zettabytes of data in the world and it will be 80% of this data unstructured. As we know, information is the currency of this digital age and to remain competitive, businesses are going through digital transformation and AI adoption to transform data into the insights. Two of the leading drivers for AI adoption is the better customer experiences and helping employees to get better at their jobs. And the leading AI use Use cases are automated customer service agents, recommendations, automations. In fact, there are two leading industries projected in their AI investments retail on improving customer experiences, via chatbots and recommendation agents, engines, and banking via fraud analysis, investigation, and also recommendation systems. All leading use cases for AI represent almost a third of all AI spending this year. How can we get from text data to knowledge and insights about real world to help companies to compete? First of all, we as human sensors express our perception of real world. Our expressions or utterances Written or audio recordings provide information about language. It could be customer's origin, sometimes customer's social level. Through textual data, we can identify the context of observed world. We can also mine knowledge about the observer, about the customer. And through that, we can infer other real world variables, which is predictive analytics. Unstructured data is a natural language. What is the difference between formal language and natural language? Natural language is ambiguous. We use contextual clue and other information. And of course, formal language is not ambiguous and it has one meaning regardless of context. Natural language is also redundant to reduce ambiguity. And we have more than one meaning, usually full of idioms and metaphors. For instance, was spilling the bees may mean something else than literally spilling bees beans. All this to show you how difficult it is for the machine to process natural language. There's a lot of challenges. We can go from processing non-standard standard English, and by, by the way, how many possible issues do you identify in this example on the top left? Segmentation issues, another problem. Does it have to be segmented by blank space or there is a different type of segmentation? We have idioms, neologisms, new words appear in our dictionaries every year. There's also world knowledge. And how about tricky entity names? How does a machine know how to parse those? We have two approaches for feature extraction from textual data. And by feature extractions, we're talking about processing text and extracting talkings of words from the textual data that we will be using later as our features for different types of machine learning algorithms. So we have two approaches for feature extractions. The traditional count-based approach, which includes term frequencies, TF-IDF, n-grams, which you can see is an example of unigram, bigram, trigram pr processing of one simple sentence. 
type of work models are effective due to their inherent nature of being just a bag of unstructured words, but will lose additional information, such as semantic or structure and sequence, and also context around nearby words. Second method is prediction-based model. We're trying to predict words from neighboring words by looking at word sequences in the corpus. And in the process, these models learn distributed representation of semantic information about the words. Every word in vocabulary is no longer just a string but a vector. It is associated with continuous vector representation of word embedding. And the most common model is this word to vec as text. So how can we convert text mining landscape in NLP task framework? So from obtaining textual data, we apply natural language processing, which allows us to examine word association and identify language features. We can do topic mining analysis that will give us idea about observed world as the human sensors see it. We can do opinion mining and sentiment analysis, which will give us idea about the observer, what the customer thinks about the product. And we can do text-based prediction, which leads us to recommendation system predictions. How many recommendation systems are you using on a daily basis? You're probably familiar with Amazon, Netflix, YouTube, Spotify. They all use engine recommendation engines. One of the core potential benefits of recommendation systems is their ability to continuously calibrate to the preference of the user. This makes products that become more and more sticky. Also, instead of recommending on all product company, for instance, Amazon enable a system of filters. So it is improving a cart value. YouTube also has subscription options. And the company makes more money when users come back time and time again by improving, and through subscriptions, the company is improving users' engagement. And of course, the majority of YouTube revenue are driven through advertisement on video properties. We have a several types of recommendation systems, collaborative filtering and content-based systems. Collaborative filtering can further be characterize as user-based system. The main idea behind user-based filtering is that if we're able to find users that have bought and liked similar items in the past, they are more likely to buy similar items in the future as well. The customers like you probably like the product that you like. In user-based system, recommend items based on user similarity. Item-based collaborative filtering. For instance, people who likes this product also like XYZ product. So this recommendation system is based on the similarity between items based on user ratings. And of course, common shortcoming for these two methods is that if you have a new user, the new user will lack a defined profile unless information is asked explicitly by a company. So those filters suffer from what we call the cold start problem. Content-based system 
provide recommendation based on a user profile and also on metadata that it has on a particular item. So it apply user likes and user's feedback. And similarities based on items features. And of course, to build a good collaborative filtering system, you need data on a large number of purchases from a large number of users. Okay, how to build recommend recommender system when you have text data and no ratings or ranking from users. Example of it is job advertisement with rich information about skills and job requirements. Think about how useful to have this type of recommendation, let's say for students when they about to graduate and start looking for their career and they can choose preferred jobs based on their applications. So our process will start as example with data provided on Kaggle competition job recommendation data set. So we'll start by cleaning and building data set. Combine job data set and also user data set. We need to convert our text data to numerical features by using vectorizers. And finally, we will need to get similarity between, between user jobs, available jobs, and applicants, applicants' interests, so we can get the top recommended jobs according to the score of the similarity. Okay, now that we have our main pipeline, let's look at more details, how to process our text unstructured data. We'll have to remove stop words, remove non-alphabetical correct characters. We might want to limitize tokens, and then we have to extract features for which there are different available methods that we can apply. But in this case, let's apply TFIDF, term frequency inverse document frequency method. We'll, then we will combine our text, which can include title of the job, company's name, job type, and description. And we will use cosine similarity, a distance based metric, to identify how similar a job description is to the applicant skill. A closeness between two vectors, in this case, our job descriptions and applicant interest or skills is calculated using the cosine angle between two vectors. So we use dot product between vector one, vector two, and Euclidean distance to recommend a job where we can, for example, take one applicant interested in or having skills for Java developer, and we can provide top 10 job recommendations that you can see below on the bottom right. So this is very simple approach to recommendation system. In educational and job seeking settings, decision making of skill acquisition is a key issue to successfully completing university degrees. So how can education impact our professional career? Skills are important not only in job descriptions. Skill terms used in course descriptions might be different from those listed in job advertisement and and we are all aware of a current gap in certain skills in demand in job market. So the skills that we use in course description might be different from those listed in job advertisement. So this type of recommendation can be also useful to identify 
what changes, modifications need to be done in curriculum. Going further, graph-based approach, including unstructured data from job descriptions, can be used for not only skills in course recommendations, but also career path recommendation, job recommendation, and finally, to e-recruiting. <laughs>